What do these three pictures have in common? If you said that all of the pictures show a repeating pattern, you would be on the right track. The full answer is that they all show moray patterns. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. In this picture, I show a sculpture in the wintertime. These lines that I'm drawing in now are part of a moray pattern that I was talking about. Here you can see how the overlapping bars of this sculpture form another set of lines. This set of lines is called a moray pattern. Let me show you an example that I've made. Here you see a set of repeating lines. Now I tilt that set of lines and add it to the first. Again, you can see how the lines of the two patterns form the moray pattern that I'm now drawing in there in yellow. But you can also see another important part of moray patterns. Here, let me draw in lines that show the spacing of the original lines there in red and another line showing the spacing between the moray pattern. Notice how the lines of the moray pattern are farther apart than the lines that formed it. This is a key point of moray patterns. The spacing of a moray pattern is always larger than the spacing of the patterns that formed it. So now let's have some fun with moray patterns. In this example, I show one bar pattern rotating on top of another. And you can see how the spacing of the moray pattern decreases as the second bar pattern is tilted more, and then how the spacing of the moray pattern increases as the bar pattern is rotated back. Next, I show a similar bar pattern, but the spacing of the bar pattern has decreased, and you can see how the spacing of the moray pattern has changed. For this example, I bend the bars of the second pattern, and now the lines of the moray pattern are curved. Here, I varied the spacing of the bars, and then tilted the pattern. You can see that even though the bars of the two patterns are straight, the lines of the moray pattern are curved. So far, I've only shown two sets of lines forming a moray pattern. Here, I show one set of rings moving on top of another and then a third set of rings moving on top of that. Last, I show the same circular pattern moving around on top of another, which just looks darn cool. Now, why am I showing this picture? In this picture, the man's jacket has a lot of weird looking patterns that look a lot like moray patterns. But are they? And if so, what are causing the moray patterns? So, it is a moray pattern. Now, moray patterns are formed by two or more repeating patterns. But in this picture, it doesn't look like there are any repeating patterns to form a moray pattern. Well, in this picture, one of the patterns is the pattern on the man's jacket. But what is the other one? In this case, the pixels of the camera that took the picture are the other pattern, because the pixels are a repeating pattern where the pattern is a very small spacing. When the camera takes a picture of something with a repeating pattern that also has a small spacing, a moray pattern is formed. The same effect can also be seen when looking at a picture that has small repeating patterns on a computer monitor or TV. To show this, I've made a video of concentric rings that get thinner and thinner. Each of the four pictures are the same pattern. However, if you look at the smaller pictures in the upper right, you can see a moray pattern that looks like more circles, because the thin outer rings of the pattern have formed a moray pattern with the pixels of your computer screen. Now, the moray pattern will look different on different computers because the spacing of the pixels will be different. Thanks for watching! I hope you've enjoyed learning about moray patterns.